Okay, here's another um, thing to look at on Melista. This is not done by a scholar, but it is done by a guy who spends a lot of time analyzing Greek. Um, it, it, I gotta find the link to it. It's something charisminfo.org. The, I'll find the link and I'll put it in the video description. What I want to do is I'm trying to just give you ways where you can do your own research instead of relying on me about how superlatives are used in Greek past, present, and future because there's a big change. And this helps us date the text of any Greek text, let alone the Bible. Here, the guy is just making his, compiling his own Greek grammar and then putting it out on the web for other people to look at. So that doesn't mean you regard it as authoritative. And even if it were authoritative, you should never just go because, you know, go with the text or go with what someone says because they got initials after their name. They're bad scholars and good scholars. In this particular case, I just want to show you um, the sort of like typical um, casting of Greek superlatives that you're going to find on the internet. It's very confusing, and, and this is one of the clearer delineations about it um, on the internet, but it's still confused. So as you can see up here, I've got Melista. Okay, and now we're going to search on it in this PDF, which I'll have a link in the video description once I find it again, um, where he's talking about Melista being used um, with adjectives or adverbs. His text here is not very clear, okay? But at least it helps you understand that there is an issue about comparatives versus superlatives. In educated Greek, they used comparatives, okay? They were always talking about more, more, more. It was never most. But in later Greek, they started to, to like, get lazy and they started using superlatives. And so what he's doing here, and it, it's not real well formatted, okay? This is the first column about positives. This is the comparative. And this is the superlative. Okay, but the superlative is not used in the Bible. Okay? In other words, he's talking about Bible verses here. None of these Bible verses use superlatives. Not a single one. Okay, the same thing is true here. All these verses he's citing, none of them use the superlative. They're using versions of these words, because I looked up all the Bible verses. In other words, Matthew 28 does not use the word taxistos for ta from taxus, takus. Okay, and it doesn't mean swift, it means suddenly. This is the wrong translation for takus. Takus is a rapture, ver rapture adverb, and it means suddenly, next in sequence, without prior warning. It means suddenly, not swift. Swift is a bad translation. It's usually translated quickly or soon, and it causes no end of trouble for the tribulational Christians, okay, the pre-trib Christians. This doesn't mean swift, and it doesn't mean soon, and it doesn't mean quickly. It means suddenly. Like an earthquake happens suddenly, without prior warning, okay? Like, all of a sudden you're standing there, and the next thing you know, the vase on your shelf drops, okay? It could, it could be ready to drop for years and years and years, but it suddenly drops at the instant it drops. Okay, that's what takus means. Takus is the right pronunciation of it. This word taxistas does not exist in the Bible, and it does not exist in the time of the Bible's Greek. All right? It comes later. All right? So when he cites Matthew here, it makes it look like taxistas is in Matthew. It's not. Okay? So all of these Bible verses are not using, not, repeat, not using these superlative forms. No Bible book uses these superlative forms. I checked them. All right? They're not there. Peter does use Megistas in 2 Peter, but the author of this PDF is not citing that, and Megistas is not used in Matthew 2760. Now, why is that important? Because Matthew was written in the 30, 30, roughly 30, 32, 33 AD. Okay? When Corinthians is written somewhere around 49, 
4449 AD, maybe even 50. Again, Matthew is written in the early 30s AD. We can tell from the Greek, and the superlatives were not used. The first time Megistas is used in the Bible is by Peter in 2 Peter, which is written in the late, uh, middle, say middle, late 60s AD. Okay? And this, of course, isn't used in the Bible at all. All right? That's what I want to show you, is there is a change to the usage of the superlative that occurs starting about mid-first century and going forward. And that's really important because um, Josephus is writing between 70 and 110 AD. And he himself, probably closer to 70 really, um, and he himself starts to use um, Melista as a superlative, okay, as you're going to see in another increment. Okay, that kills this increment. Uh, again, the link to this particular PDF will be in the video description. Uh, how do I turn this off? Okay, this is another increment on the usage of Melista. Here, all I want to show is that it became a popular idea to use it as literary. You know, in other words, if you were part of high society. In earlier days, you did not use superlatives. That was considered gauche. But by the time of Hadrian, it was no longer considered gauche. It helps us date. One of the keys to dating Bible books is by the use of this term, Melista. It's not the only key that you would use. One swallow doesn't make a summer. But at the same time, if you find a swallow, it means there are other swallows nearby. So here's a book that I happen to find on the internet. How good it is or not good, I don't know. That's not the point I'm trying to make. And a link to it will be in the video description so you can read it at your leisure. What I wanted to do is I found it because I was searching on the word Melista. And the time, the time it's used here is in the context of alleged Pythagorean teachings that are categorized into akusumata, hearings really, okay? Definitions, tiesti, what is, tiesti literally means what is, and then superlatives. This is just not how it would have been cast in Paul's day, you know, when Paul was born, for example. Timalista. You wouldn't be, the word wouldn't be used that way back then. Okay? But by Hadrian's time, it is used that way. Because this is in the context of Hadrian's time. See? Secundus is submitting answers to 20, 20 questions allegedly formulated by Hadrian. Now, Hadrian was the guy who lived, um, you know, he was the guy basically who is most famously known for building Hadrian's Wall, and secondly, for destroying the temple, the second temple. And he put a pig temple on top of it, rebuilt the entire city, raised it to the ground, rebuilt the city, called it Aeolia Capitolina. Okay, he actually didn't finish doing that by the time he died. But that's what Hadrian is known for. So you're now talking between 135, 140 AD, which is what the time of the Bar Kokhba rebellion in Jerusalem, which is what prompted Hadrian to do this. Okay, so we're talking, you know, the end of the first century to the first third of the second century AD. Melista had changed that much that it would be phrased as T. Melista. You would never see that in the older, older literature. Okay, people just, it, it wasn't considered proper. Okay, or if it was used, it was used seldom, or it was used by somebody who wasn't educated in proper Greek. Okay, so this is telling you something about the change. All right, superlatives were not used in early Greek. Okay. So in this book, he's talking about something of Hadrian's time, okay, a form of rhetoric, a form of, of philosophy that's based on Pythagoras, all right, and it's categorized in Hadrian's day into sections, one of which is called Timalista. That's all I wanted to show in this video. 
is the A is how the, the word changes in its usage. And, you know, a true scholastic study would be much more involved than what I'm doing here. But I'm just trying to give you an idea of how do you go about dating a text, whether it's Bible text or anything else. And here we're seeing this sort of mutation of the usage of the word Melista by Hadrian's time this way. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover. Okay, am I recording now? I'm still a neophyte with Windows 7. Um, <clears throat> this is the book on Greco-Roman literature. I think the best way, to, I'll put a link in the sidebar, but I just wanted you to see how you could find it if you lose the link in the, in the video description. Just type Greco-Roman literature David Aoun. Okay, and then you'll be able to, to find him. Okay, and then for the other book, um, the one that's right here, Greek Grammar Notes, um, you have to go to charism.info, and I'll put a link in the video description to the actual book because I've got to um, do that in order to document where you can get the PDFs I just showed you. Okay, that's it. How do I turn this off?